Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. We are at the Bossier City uh, Hotel Point Show. Uh, about to go inside, make a lot of money, but also find a lot of nice coins. Come with us, we'll show you a little bit of the show, give you an interview, and then show you some awesome coins. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, hey everyone, we are here with Richie Self at the Bossier City Coin Show. You want to introduce yourself, Mr. Rich? Yeah, I'm Richie Self with American Coins and Collectibles in Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. So, Mr. Richie, how has the show been for you so far? The show's really good. Uh, it's a small show. We're the show sponsor. Uh, it's a 34-table show, but we have a very diverse group of dealers here. The public turnout has uh, been really strong. We're very pleased with it. Would you say the venue is a very nice venue? I, I think it is. It is. This is held at the Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, very safe facility. We have uniformed uh, Bossier uh, Police Department on site. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place to have a trade show like this. Okay. Now, Mr. Ritchie, let's, let's get some background on, on you and as, as a dealer and as a collector. How did you get started collecting and dealing? I started collecting as a child. Uh, my grandparents had given me a silver dollar, and that that was the initial spark that got me interested in coins. Uh, I've worked professionally as a dealer for 33 years now. Okay. And what would you say you collect? I collected what I could afford, which was, when I was a kid, I collected one-cent pieces and nickels. Th also, coins I could get out of circulation. Those were the things I could afford. The silver and gold didn't come until much later. So what, what would you say you appreciate about the coin community and coin collecting in general? Um, I found it to be a very sharing community when it comes to knowledge and information. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of expertise out there and it's always amazing that people are willing to share this information with others. Yes, sir. And where can people find you if they're interested in dropping off a collection or just talking to you about their, their coins and, and their interests? As I mentioned, we're at, uh, uh, in Shreveport. We're at 855 Piermont Road in Shreveport. Um, we, we do have an office there. We're always willing to look at coins, currency, bonds, documents, collectibles of those sorts. There's no charge. There's no fee for us to do this. We're always uh, pleased to offer our opinion. And uh, if anybody has anything like that, we're certainly glad to look at it. Now, do you have, uh, is it a by appointment or is it just your standard hours? Well, we're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday, 10 to 2. Yeah, this is something you could just walk in with. You don't necessarily need an appointment. If, if it's a more extensive collection, it might be best to schedule something that we have an ad adequate amount of time to dedicate uh, to that. Okay, and do you guys have a phone number that they can reach you at? We do. Our local number is 318-868-9077. We also have a toll-free 1-800-865-3562. Thank you, Richie. I appreciate your time. Hey, we appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting the show. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right, you guys. Just made it home from uh, the Bossier City Hotel show. I want to show you guys a few things uh, to start you guys off. This is uh, the best best find of the show for sure. This is the 1940 Walking Liberty Half Dollar Grade MS65 by NGC. And as you guys can tell, this is a white label. We purchased this white label from a, uh, from a few guys that had a few older holders. They didn't know what they had. And like I said, we don't have to educate people on stuff. We're there to you know find the best coins and uh, get them for the best price. They had a you know, they had a price tag on the coin of 130, and uh, it's you know it's an older holder. Someone was trying to mark them up way back then when they were trying to sell them. Uh, but this coin is is an expensive piece. It's going into the white label collection. Very happy about it. It will receive a CAC sticker. Not sure about gold CAC sticker, but if you guys don't know about white labels, I'll leave a link down below. Just giving you guys information about this coin. Uh, that like I said, they're pretty pricey coins. Just because of that white label in the background, that's kind of what they call white labels. Uh, with older holders, 
Now this one's not so old, but you can sit, you can tell there's normally these boxes around um, kind of the label there. But with white labels, you can kind of see just the white area and then just kind of the information about the coin. That's something that you got to look out for when you're at shows. Uh, you'll end up making uh, you know a good chunk of change if you end up finding one and someone doesn't understand uh, you know the label history of NGC. We also made a video about that link down below as well. This is a 1918S a Stan Liberty quarter. Uh, I, I was going to grade it like fine or something like that. Nothing too crazy, but an early date, nice hole filler for an album. You know, it's been through the ringer a little bit, but that's just the way it goes with raw stuff. You just kind of want to find some wholesome stuff like that. Also, nice 20 cent piece, 1875S. You know, pretty circulated example, but nothing wrong with it at all, which is the most important part. Just general circulation, and it really shows in the coin. Pretty excited about those. I'm going to give you guys a tip off the bat here. If you guys do buy um, you know, World Trade Center stuff and don't know who to sell them to, Matt LaPosa. Matt LaPosa on Facebook buys these, um, kind of pays the highest premium for them. And I'm going to tell you guys what I paid for this one. So, uh, you know, 10th ounce gold right now is selling for about $250. Um, he had $275 marked on it. I picked it up knowing that Matt LaPosa would pay me a premium for this. Uh, you know, I messaged him as soon as I got this coin in hand. And he offered me 425 for it. So, World Trade Center coins, especially gold, are very sought after. There's only one 1440. I'm guessing from 2001, uh, like this gold piece. Just stuff for you guys to understand about uh, World Trade Center stuff. It's, uh, you know, actually there's a lot of people that collect it and enjoy it. Are you enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please hit that like button. Comment your thoughts down below. What do you think of the video so far? Uh, what do you think of our channel? We'd love to know. And subscribe if you're new. New videos every week. Uh, we try to keep you entertained on the newest kind of numismatic journey that we're on. Uh, but let's get back to today's video. Now we're going to start off with a few old olders here. This is a 1935S M uh, MS65 Boone. This is in a PCGS Rattler holder. I also bought these from the old holder guys there. Now when you buy these coins, most of the time they're undergraded or they just have really good eye appeal, like this one. Uh, and it also has that Lee Birchfield kind of certified coins that sticker on the back. Try to remove it. Still working on this one, but uh, a pretty neat piece for sure. I'm going to try to move through these as much as possible because we do have a lot of coins here to show you. This is a Delaware commemorative grade MS64. The eye appeal on most of these are pretty nice. That's why I picked them up. And sometimes it's just harder to find, uh, you know, commemoratives, certain commemoratives, especially in Rattler holders. I don't see this one too often like this, so pretty stoked about it. Uh, I'm going to see what, possibly what CAC says on that coin, not too sure. This is a Lynchburg. This one, uh, for me, has the most amount of eye appeal. Uh, this one I think might CAC, I'm not too sure. The toning on the reverse kind of bothers me a little bit. It's kind of hard for you guys to see, but when you get it in a light, it almost looks slightly like PVC, but it just might be toning. But you know, getting CAC stickers on uh, commemoratives or anything in a Rattler holder is pretty tough just because there's a lot of PVC on coins. Uh, and most of that stems from old coin books that used to use holders that are used to use flips that actually, uh, you know, give, give, gave PVC to the coins when they were in there for a certain amount of time. And that kind of residue is still on the coins and they were put in Rattler holders. This is a Roanoke. I like the I like the slight toning that it has on it. It's kind of like a tan toning to it. I don't know. I think it's an interesting coin overall. I love the design of the reverse. Just, you know, very busy but pretty cool as well. Two ships on there. I love that a lot. Uh, here's one of the most, you know, a really nice eye appeal Morgan that we bought. We're not even been buying Morgans too often. But when we do, we just want one that's, you know, pretty beautiful like this one. This one is a, a 1898 MS64 Plus Dimple. And you can tell by the eye appeal it's on another level. I think this is the only one in 64 Plus Dimple. And uh, Richie, who was actually running the show and had an interview with us, found, uh, sent this coin in himself, I believe. And he got it back. And it is a stunning coin. Very happy for him. 1898, uh, the P-Mint, it's a little bit harder to get in Dimple. And, you know, with the eye appeal on it, it's going to be actually a little bit harder as well. The S-Mints are normally have the kind of the deepest mirrors, but this one's actually pretty good, and I'm very happy about it. There is a little haziness on it, but that's just because they didn't clean off the dies at the time too well, and that's just my opinion on it. 
I think I can state, find some history on it as well. It's the 1936S Baybridge Commemorative. Has some kind of rusty toning or kind of gritty toning around uh, United States of America. Not really too many hits in the field here. Was probably graded on an Econ sub. And, you know, once again, you get that busy reverse. And a lot of people have been asking about commemoratives lately, and we're going to add a lot from this video onto the website, AcousticCollectibles.com. If you guys are interested, let's take a look at this next coin here. This is an 1838 uh, Capos Tap Dollar. Uh, the main the main problem on this coin, probably why they net graded it, because it looks like it used to be in a bezel or something like that. But it has little spots on it as well. But, you know, when you're trying to find a coin for somebody for their collection, I think they net graded this down just because of those two things. But I do think this coin had a shot at AU if it, those things didn't exist. Still a pretty neat piece. Got this one actually for an affordable price. The dealer had a sticker on it from a while ago, and he's like, I'm, I'm just sticking with these prices, whatever you want to give me. And so I ended up paying pretty affordable for that coin. This is an 1838 No Stars Dime, graded uh, G4 by PCGS. 1837, uh, 1837 dimes are pretty easy to find, but this one, 1838O, is really tough to find. Especially in this original kind of condition. Not too much of a fan of... The rotated coin in there, but it, you know, I think it can be fixed. It just has to look use the internet a little bit on that. Here is an 1840 no drapery uh, dime graded G6 by PCGS. Uh, the coin is a pretty original overall. When I take a look at it, not too many problems with the coin. And when you, I try to buy this stuff occasionally, just so I can you know put some stuff on the website that. Is maybe for a collector that doesn't spend a whole lot of money. Some of these are actually pretty pricey down here, but some are actually pretty affordable and have a really nice piece of history attached to it, like this coin right here. But let me show you guys a few more here. Next is this 1860 half dime graded XF45 by PCGS. You can tell that it has a lot of originality on the coin. It's super dark. Not too sure what you know PCGS's exact thoughts are or what John's uh, thoughts are from CAC. But, you know, just a nice, you know, meat and potatoes kind of Civil War date. And it's in a medium range of grades as well. It's not something that's too worn um, where you can't see the date or the details. So that one's kind of a middle of the road coin that you might want for your collection. This is a 1945S Washington Quarter. We don't buy these too often unless they have some kind of interesting detail about them and they're priced pretty right. You can see the rainbow right down by 1945. And that kind of sold me on the coin. And it's a pretty nice high grade as well. I think this one has capped out at 66 plus, but who knows? Has a toning spot right uh, to the left of the left kind of wing there. It's not a carbon spot, it's more of a toning spot. So that's something that you should know when you're taking a look at this coin. And it, it didn't really hurt the grade as much. If that was a carbon spot on the reverse, I'm sure it would have been a 63 or 64 coin. Most of the time, they net grade people down because of that. This is a 1955 uh, Washington Quarter, graded MS66+. Plus. This one has kind of the best rainbows, as you can see. You know, just a full span of rainbows. Has a little bit of a kind of a powdery touch to it. You know, it's not full, but it has kind of like a, a sprinkling of just whiteness to it. And when you flip over the coin, it has a little bit of a soft rainbow on there as well. Probably from a, a mint set, I'm not too sure. Uh, all these were kind of from the same collection that a guy had, and I think they sold them to Richie. Once again, picked a few coins up from Richie. This is a 1954S uh, Washington Quarter, graded MS67 by PCGS. Has a little bit of rainbow right in the Liberty there and started to go terminal. When you flip over the coin, has that kind of same story. Has a little bit of a rainbow off to the right there. Bought this one for gray sheet. Had a little bit of character to it, so I didn't mind paying a little bit above that. Um, just to, you know, find something as a variety for somebody that might be picking up Washington Quarters. This is a 1920S PCGS AU55 SOQ. It has, I think it's been dipped before, but it does still have some nice remaining luster on the coin, especially for an AU55 example. And when you flip over the coin, you, know, you can really tell it's been dipped just because a lot of the cartwheel isn't just, is just not so natural anymore. But... Finding AU55 examples in the teens and in the 20s have been a little bit tough for me, so any one that I can get my hands on, I try to I try to get them. But pretty solid example, especially for AU55. 
This is a 1916D Buffalo nickel graded AU58 by PCGS. It, you know, I think the luster has enough for AU58 plus exam. I'm sorry, for an AU58 plus example, if I want to get this reconsidered. But when I take a look at the reverse here, it has a little bit of a, a carbon sprout right underneath A. So I don't know if John would cack this coin. And most of the time when I try to get it reconsidered for AU58 plus, I want a cack sticker on the coin. So if John's not going to pass this coin, I probably would just want to put it on the website. Still a nice wholesome 16D. A lot of things going for it, and it's not super pricey. You know, if it was Mint State 64, we'd be talking about a whole different price range. But finding coins like this, middle of the road, early dates, is normally what I love to pick up. Here is a 1927S, a lot of uh, a better date for the SLQ series. Not too many problems with the coin. There's no distracting spots or hits on the rim. Flipped over the coin, it has that kind of same story on here. A lot of circulation under the eagle is what you can kind of see on most of these. Here is an 1853 three cent piece, three cent silver. A lot of these you can't find in holders right now. I've, I've been asked about five or six times for three cent silvers and nobody, I can't find them anywhere. I look on eBay, they're 60, 70, 80 dollars over retail. And I just don't want people to pay that on our website. And so, you know, here's one that we found at the show. Pay a little bit of a premium for it but it's gonna be a nice affordable piece for someone that's looking for three cent silvers. I've also been looking for a nice flying eagle. This one is in a little bit of an older holder, has a little bit of scuffs on it, but all original, nothing wrong with this flying eagle, and it has large letters as you can see, but just a nice wholesome coin here. There's nothing wrong with it, and a nice kind of brown to it as well. That's just something that I like to pick up. Stuff that hasn't been tampered with too much, I know we've had a few dipped coins here, but a lot of the stuff that I really want to aim for at the end of the day is nice original coins like this, like this one here. This 1854 seated quarter with arrows kind of has that little bit of originality to it as well. I think it had some old cleaning way, way back, but uh, PCGS, you know, ha has some leniency like I was talking about last video with their grading. Sometimes they're, you know, Pretty lenient just because they understand that there's there's so many things that could happen to a coin, but once someone starts to harshly clean it or affect you know a lot of its surfaces, they're going to put a details grade on the coin. But this one did pass, and you know overall it looks like a very well nice overall original piece. Now we're going to start off with a little bit more of some heavy hitters here. This is an 1879 uh, shield nickel that's a proof 63. It's 1879 over 8 actually. I'm going to include the overdate kind of right uh, to the right of this coin here just to show you guys what the overdate might look like. It's going to be super hard for me to pick it up on camera. So I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of its luster. It has a little bit of color in the fields as well. But don't see many of these often, especially in OGHs. And you know, I wanted to take a risk on it and see what people thought. Don't see too many overdate proofs as well. So it's kind of interesting to see. And you know, everything about the coin screamed buy it, so that's what I did. This is a 1916 Mercury Dime grade MS64 full bands by PCGS. Uh, the luster on this coin is immaculate. I love this coin so much. When I saw it, it blew me away, and I wanted to pick it up. I can't even film it properly at this point just because of how nice it is. And so when I finally got it back here, I thought, man, people are going to love this coin. I love the coin personally. If I could keep it, I would. We've been talking a little bit, like I said, about older holders recently, and this is an 1895 Barber Quarter, grade proof 64 by PCGS. Nice cameo looking obverse here. You know, you can just tell the contrast between the details and the fields. When you flip it over, the main kind of issue is that toning between of and America. And it has a it's a little bit more hazy. There's just that cameo and it's not gonna pop out there. That's the main reason why this coin didn't get a cameo designation, but still a beautiful coin. Buying coins in older holders are demanding a premium, like I said, and so watch out for those and kind of do your homework because you're going to be able to make a few bucks on those or have a really nice older holder collection. This is an 1875 Proof 64 Cameo uh, seated, seated Dime here, and it has a lot of kind of reds and blues on the obverse. Sorry about the plastic, but I'm going to include more great photos on our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. 
can't plug it enough. You guys are going to like it over there. But it really does have that eye appeal for me. It's an untouched kind of uh, proof series, as you can see, the series holder here. And, you know, it's just a really nice Proof 64 Cameo. Not sure if it would be a 65, but really premium for the grade. I'm sure that one would cack. Came out of an old collection, but I didn't want to buy the other one just because it wasn't attractive looking. But I bought this Proof uh, 1883 seated quarter instead, just because it has some really beautiful red and blues on the obverse here. And, uh, wow, I just love it a lot. And so I had to pick this one up. And, there, you know, there has a little bit of a cameo look on the reverse here. And, you know, I'm starting to move into bigger coins, as you can see, just because a lot of them are, are just very nice and really do appeal to different collectors. So we were talking a little bit about the more affordable stuff, the stuff that you want to start to accumulate over time just for typesets and everything else. And then there's the, the bigger hitters here. This is the one we also picked up. This one is, this came, came from the 1895 Proof Barber Quarter there. This is an 1884 seated uh, half dollar graded proof 62. Has some hairlines on the coin, which is what you can expect for a lower grade uh, MS proof or uncirculated proof. When I flip it over, I, I like the coin overall, and I just don't see any of these in these older holders. And I don't know, I just had to take a risk on it. And when I got it back, someone picked it up pretty quick and couldn't be more thankful to have the opportunity to hold stuff like this in my hand. Here's one of the nicest two cent pieces I've ever held in my hand and looked at. This is an 1864 large motto, two cent piece, great MS64 red by PCGS. And as you guys can tell, the red is just flawless on the coin. There's no brown that you really can see on it. And I mean, I just enjoy this coin so much. So thankful for everybody at the show that offered us great coins like this. I can't wait to show you guys this on the website. Hopefully one of you guys pick it up. And if you guys don't, I am not offended at all because having a coin like that to pick up every day is just a true blessing. This is an 1883 no sense V-nickel. A lot of these have been selling on our website and this one's pretty uh, PQ. Nothing too, nothing too uh, of a problem with it. No spots. Still some great cartwheel luster on it as well. I, I don't know. I think this one, if it ever was sent to CAC, which I don't think it needs it, but it would CAC just because, like I said, no distracting problems with it. A really nice 64 for the grade. Here's an 1842 half dime. Uh, you can kind of tell there's some interesting looking original surfaces here. I'm not sure if it had a little bit of old cleaning on the coin, but just just cheap, affordable, seated stuff and holders. I like picking up stuff that looks like this. Is just, I don't know, for us, we really enjoy working with it. This is the 1858 seated quarter. Very original. Even has some little bit of luster left on it and some color. Picked this one up on Facebook actually. When it came in, I thought, man, I should just put it in this video because there's just a lot of type stuff that's, you know, circulated that you guys would love to take a look at. And this one is no exception. A pretty interesting piece. And let me talk about the big kahuna that we're going to show off here. This is the last coin we'll be showing in this video. This is a 1909 SVDB graded mint state 65 red brown. Uh, by NGC. As you guys can tell, it has toning the blue and the green on the obverse here. And the story behind this coin is that I was at the Tyler show, I think eight or nine months ago, and uh, a dealer just bought it. His name, uh, this was from Minden Coins in Louisiana, and I thought it was priced way too much back then. I think it was like 3300 bucks. And, you know, when I, when I took a look at it, I'm like, man, I can't afford this coin. Who would buy it? And then he, he pulled it out, just pulled it out a few days ago for us to look at one more time. And I was like, man, if I, I fell in love with this coin. As soon as I saw it the first time, I can't pass it up when I see it the second time. And this coin is just, it's just a monster. I don't see SVDBs like this. I've had a few days where I've asked myself, how can I find this coin so I can buy it? And then it just presented itself at the Bossier City Show. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video so far. Let's roll to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. What do you think of the whole video? Thank you for watching until the end. And subscribe if you're new. New coins on our website, kakushacollectibles.com. We will see you next time.